Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm going to do something Chinese again today. I haven't done that in a while. I'm going to make pork chow mein. Now, how this recipe came about is when I had a job when I was working, before I retired, there was a Chinese restaurant near where I worked. They have since lost their lease and they're no longer there anymore, but they had the best Chinese food and it was very inexpensive. We would eat there at least once a week. And there were weeks when we were at the restaurant for lunch for all five days of the week. I love their pork chow mein, but of course, like any good Chinese restaurant, they're not going to give away any of their secrets. So what I would do is I would bring a jar with me to the restaurant. And when I ate my pork chow mein, I would spoon some of the sauce from the plate into the jar and take it home and experiment. And I got fairly close to the sauce. That's what I'm going to show you today when we make our pork chow mein. So let's get into the ingredients I'm going to use. For the sauce, I'm using three quarters of a cup, 177 milliliters of beef stock. I made this from bullion. That'll be okay. I have four teaspoons of oyster flavored sauce. You usually find that in the oriental foods section of the grocery store, or you can look for it at an oriental market. One half teaspoon sesame oil, three quarter teaspoon sugar, one teaspoon of soy sauce, and then finally one tablespoon of cornstarch. Then for the main part of my pork chow mein, I'm using six ounces, 170 grams of these chow mein noodles. Any thin noodle will work fine. This is thin spaghetti. You could use this or use vermicelli. That Chinese restaurant I ate at often would use linguine. So any noodle that you're comfortable using, that'll work fine. I have two tablespoons of peanut oil. Corn oil is okay. I like peanut oil for this because peanut oil has a very high smoke point. You can get it very hot before it'll start burning. I have two tablespoons all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon Chinese five spice. That's a spice mix. Again, this is usually found in the oriental food section at the grocery store. If you can't find it anywhere, Google Chinese five spice. There are recipes online for mixing your own. I have one half pound, 227 grams of pork. I'll be cutting this into strips after I trim the fat off. You can use three to four green onions. I cut these two different ways and I'll explain that in a bit. And I'll also show you how I chopped all these up. This is one quarter pound, 113 grams of carrot that I've cut into julienne strips. One quarter of a large yellow onion cut into strips. You can use one to two small cloves of garlic. I have one here because these are rather large. I didn't cut my cabbage up yet because I wanted you to see this. This is a Chinese cabbage or Napa cabbage. I believe it's also called baby bok choy. I'm going to be using half of this head of cabbage and chopping it up to go into my pork chow mein. And then you need two to three thin slices of fresh ginger, minced fine. This is my ginger in this little packet. One time I bought a whole lot of ginger and minced it all up, sealed it in these little packets and then froze it. Now I always have ginger in the freezer. So those are the ingredients that I'm working with today. One of the things I noticed in the pork chow mein in that restaurant is that they cooked really well. They caramelized some of the green onions, the upper green portion. So I'm going to cut small pieces, quarter inch, what's that, less than a centimeter. Just the upper portion, I'll use this in the remainder of my dish. And then I'm going to cook these really well. Maybe I'll do two of these onions and then use this part to caramelize. I also need some long pieces of onion. Maybe about an inch. Was that two and a half centimeters? Again, the green portion. Get those into a bowl. couple of pieces off of that one. And then what I'm going to do with these down low white pieces, 
cut the root end off. Cut those in half, and then I'm going to cut down through them once. So that those will give me a nice long pieces of onion, green onion in my chow mein. I'm going to trim these ends off. And to do a julienne, think of matchsticks. If you have a mandolin, and it is a mandolin, not a mandolin, mandolin is a, what is it, an Elizabethan or Restoration era guitar, you want to just cut these and do sticks. Like so. And that's julienne. I said I was going to use about a quarter of this onion. This onion is not the freshest. I do have fresh onion, but I think this will be okay. I mean, onions, if you take care of them, they'll be fine. Set these aside. I'll use those later. And then don't want to waste any. I'm just going to cut these into long pieces by cutting down through the rings. And then just cutting that root end off. And that should just reduce that down to slivers of onion, which is what I want. Again, more like, like a julienne, sort of like the carrots. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using only half this cabbage. So you just basically want to cut down through the middle, cut it in half. Cut out this stem piece. And then just coarsely chop this up. This is going to cook down quite a bit in the wok. That's it. That's our cabbage. The pork, as I said, trim the fat off. And I'm going to cut through this and then cut thin pieces cutting across like that. And what that'll give me is that'll give me nice little thin slivers of pork for inside of my pork chow mein. I need to do my sauce here. That's the cornstarch. I don't want to just dump cornstarch into hot liquid because then I'll get lumps. So I'm going to stir the cornstarch into the cold beef bouillon. Now I can pour the rest of my beef stock in there and then bring up my heat. I'm going to leave that on medium. And then what I'm interested in doing here is going to put all my ingredients in there, but I want to bring this up to a temperature where the cornstarch goes transparent. So that's my oyster flavored sauce, my sesame oil, I love sesame oil, sugar, and soy sauce. So my sauce now is a nice dark, clear, and you can see it's thickened just a little bit because of the cornstarch. I'm turning the heat off. You don't want to boil that cornstarch. It'll lose its thickening power. I'm going to set this aside. That'll thicken up a little bit more when I set it aside. And next I'm going to cook my noodles. While I'm waiting for my water to come up to the boil to cook the noodles, I'm going to mix my flour mixture for coating the pork. This is just to dust the pork with before I put it in the hot oil to cook it. It'll give the pork a nice flavor on the surface of it before it goes into my pork chow mein. 
So that's just the flour and the Chinese five spice. My water has come up to a rapid boil here. So I'm going to drop my noodles in there. These cook quickly, three to five minutes. And then I have a colander in the sink. As soon as these are cooked, I'm going to drain these in the colander and then rinse them well with cold water to stop the cooking process. I am in the meantime now heating my wok up with that peanut oil in it. What I did with my pork is I put it in that flour and Chinese five spice mixture and really dusted that well so that all my pork is now coated with that mixture. I want to get this really, really hot. And the only two ways that you can do it that I know of is to watch to see when it starts to smoke or use a digital thermometer. I've got a digital thermometer here that should give me a reading of that temperature. It's coming up to 400 degrees. So I think that's a good temperature to work with. So I'm going to put my pork in there. And then cook this quickly. I don't really want to brown this, but I want it to have a nice be thoroughly cooked and have a slightly browned crust on it. I have removed my pork from the pan and these are the small green onions, the ones that I cut into small quarter inch pieces. I noticed when I was eating in that Chinese restaurant that there were some green onions in the pork chow mein that were caramelized. They were cooked to a nice brown color. I do like caramelized onions. They add a nice sweet flavor to foods. So I'm going to cook these. I've reduced the heat, by the way, to medium. They don't need that really, really high heat for this. Okay, so you can see my green onions cooked up very nicely. Now I can start adding in my larger vegetables. And I'm going to cook these about three to four minutes until these start to cook tender. Okay, these vegetables are nearly done. So I'm going to add at this point my garlic. Crush that in there. If you don't have a garlic crusher, you can just mince that. And this is my ginger. Give that a stir, put my cabbage in there, and then I'm going to put a lid on this to let that cabbage steam a little bit. All right, I'm just getting ready to finish assembling my pork chow mein. That's had a chance to steam a little bit. So, put my noodles in there. And my pork. Stir all that together. And then last of all, I want to pour my sauce in there. Stir that up to get all that coated nicely. And then the last step will be to taste this and see how good it tastes. There's a nice lot of pork chow mein. Get some of those noodles on that plate. And then get some of the vegetables and pork on there. Oh, that's looking so beautiful and it smells so good. You can serve this with white rice, fried rice, wontons, egg rolls. I have a fried rice recipe and an egg rolls recipe on the website. 
That is beautiful. I can't wait to see how good that tastes. All right, there it is. I do have chopsticks and I know how to use them. When I was in college, a Vietnamese girlfriend taught me how to use chopsticks, but I'm a lot more efficient with a fork. And that's the Italian in me. I can twirl up my spaghetti without even needing a spoon. That is so good. I don't know which I like better. On this or the pork chow mein in that restaurant. Oh, okay, excuse me. I gotta go enjoy my dinner. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.